All right, welcome back to Phlebotomy Solutions. I wanna go ahead and make a comment that I didn't make in my last video for the straight needle. Uh, what I forgot to mention, which is kind of important, when you're doing a straight needle draw or the back of the hand, specifically on the, uh, the straight needle draw, patients used to pump their fists like this and get their thinking, I'm gonna get my vein pumped either on the, on the break of the elbow uh, where they had uh, the three veins. Uh, so they thought I'm gonna pump my fist and that'll be fine. There's no more pumping a fist anymore. Do not allow your patient to pump the fist. This can cause hemo concentration, just like the tourniquet being left on longer than one minute. So the same effect of a tourniquet being left on for one minute is the same effect of pumping a fist like this or giving a, a ball to squeeze. You don't want to do that. The antecubital fossa area should not be, uh, you know, uh, used by the pumping of the fist to try and get those veins up. That can cause hemoconcentration and it's been tested and known to do that by labs. So no more pumping a fist. Don't give them anything to squeeze and pump. What I usually will have the patient do is just make a fist and hold it, but don't squeeze or pump if I'm drawing from the antecubital fossa area with the three major veins. So again, no pumping. Keep that in mind. I forgot to mention that in the straight needle draw, but I'm mentioning it here. No pumping on either site when you're drawing blood on the hand or on the area of the, bro of the break of the elbow and the antecubital fossa area. All right, let's talk about the back of the hand and drawing from the back of the hand, uh, which veins and how we do this. As far as steps and procedures go, nothing changes except for one thing. The veins, there's no order of veins here. As we had above in the, uh, up at the back break of the elbow, the antecubital fossa area, we have the median cubital, the cephalic, and the basilic vein. Here, we just have the dorsal metacarpal veins, and they go from the knuckle up to the wrist area where the watch would go. And there's no specific order on this. We can draw anywhere between the wrist above where the watch is, or at the watch area down to the knuckle. We cannot draw on the inside of the wrist where the radial artery is or anywhere along the knuckles. Those are off limits, CLSI standards, only let, allows us to draw here at the, the dorsal area and the wrist area. These veins come from the basilic and median cube and the cephalic vein interchanging on the outside coming in. So between the cephalic and the basilic, they run in and interchange, connect and form the dorsal metacarpal veins. Now, so again, we don't have an order here. So with this, we stay off of, like I said, the knuckles and inside the wrist. The equipment is the same, is different as far as uh, the device, of course, is a butterfly, not a straight needle, but as far as the one end having a rubber sleeve with a needle in there for the, for the adapter, that's the same, like a straight needle, except now we have a tubing and we have what we call a butterfly with some wings here. Standard draw for a butterfly needle on the back of the hand is 23 gauge. You'll see it says 23 gauge here. We don't want to use a 21 gauge in the back of the hand, typically because the needle is too big and it's, it can collapse the vein. It's, it's a little more painful for the patient and it's just not necessary. So a 23 gauge is perfectly fine. If I want to use a 21 gauge butterfly, I would use it uh, where we did the straight needle at and I would draw there uh, in that area of the break of the elbow. So I want to reserve my 21 gauge. So when I do the median cubital or cephalic vein, at the at the break of the elbow okay so the antecubital fossa uh, where all three veins lie at the wrist area is where i want to use my 21 gauge here i use the dorsal metacarpal veins so again same equip same type of equipment just more of a butterfly and of course my tubes my tourniquet my alcohol and of course my two by twos here so again we always look at three to four inches above the site for my tourniquet so i'm going to tie my tourniquet the same way and there's no order of the vein, so I don't have to worry about searching for one. I just look at the same one I have. Here's my tourniquet tie. Now again, I wanna look here and kind of find the best vein that I can find. What I'm looking for is a vein that's not too big, not too large and fat, because those can collapse a little easier, but I'm also gonna look for a nice sturdy vein. Here's the other thing. If I'm dealing with a, a neonate or an infant, and I'm using a butterfly, whether on the hand or even on the, uh, the break of the elbow, uh, I don't want to use large tubes. These are adult sized tubes. Uh, the vacuum is stronger. And if I use these on a neonate, it takes too much blood out on an infant and that can cause some serious problems. I have a video on this. 
uh, dealing with uh, blood cultures and of course uh, finger, finger sticks, uh, capillary sticks on infants, uh, you know, heel sticks. And they, I give a chart on how much blood we're allowed to take out. But we have tubes that are a quarter of this size for children, basically eight years, seven years and under. And we want to make sure we use those tubes if we're dealing with infants or newborns, not large tubes like this with vacuum. So keep that in mind. These are for adults and we want to make sure we keep them for adults. So again, the assembly of the equipment is always the same. Again, I take my sheet off of here and I get my vacutainer holder and I attach it the same way, screw it in and I'm ready to go. It's simple and it's easy. This does have a plastic sheet over the needle. So when I'm ready to take it out, I have it no problem. So once my equipment's ready, my tourniquet's on, again, I fold up in quarters, work for the center out. If I'm locating my vein right here, I go three to four times center out. I do not rub over the site. We discussed that earlier in a straight needle draw. That's a no-no. So again, take my butterfly here. There's different ways to do this now. People have asked me, how do you handle this vacutainer holder? Couple of ways. I can either hold on to it with this hand, pop my needle in. If I'm able to let go, then I can let it go and get my tubes and go in and out through here. Or I can actually put it in this hand here, grab it with my two fingers, go here and here. I don't like to use the wings of this butterfly. I don't like to do this. And I tell you why. When you use a butterfly and you get into a vein, you'll see a flash of blood right here. And that tells you you're in the vein. If I am holding on to the butterfly like this, I can't see the flash. So for me, I like to use my two fingers and a thumb towards the back here enough so I can see the flash. So when I'm in, I stop just like I did with the straight needle. I hold here in stop. And now I can go ahead and do this, get my tubes and go in. I could also leave my tube already in here. Just not all the way in just like this. And when I'm ready, I can just pop it in. But again, I hold two fingers and a thumb and go right in through here. So if I'm going to draw, I like to go from right here at the side. Here's the vein. I don't like to go directly in the vein because veins move. And if this vein moves, if I go in, that means I'm going to have to redirect my needle and start to fish in order to stick my needle in the vein. And again, there's no fishing. What I like to do is I like to come at the side of the vein right here, just, just a centimeters before the vein, go into the skin, push the vein through and pop it in. If the vein moves, that's okay. I can just keep moving forward until the needle pushes into the vein. So I don't go directly in. I come at a side and go in. Remember, no fishing. This is a scalpel, a little micro scalpel. If I start to move it around like I did, like I told you earlier on the straight needle, it can cut. You can lacerate the vein. If I was doing it up there at the break of the elbow, I can lacerate a nerve. I can hit a tendon. Uh, you know, I could, uh, you know, hit the artery. I don't want to do that. It's very painful and you don't know what damage you're doing underneath the skin. So no fishing. Once I go in, then of course I can let it go. If I'm able to, that's fine. Get my tubes, pop them in, pull them out, invert, set them down, get my tube, pop them in, set them down. All right. One thing I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention in the video was how we anchor or retract the skin. Now, as before I go in the needle into the vein here, I want to be able to hold the hand here with my thumb underneath the hand with my fingers on the thumb and just retract and pull down at the knuckle, draw back and pull down as the needle is about to go in. So my anchoring and retraction here is push down, squeeze and pull down on the hand. I could have them relax their hand underneath my fingers here, use my thumb at the knuckle and then pull down and retract and anchor the site. That way my needle can get in. Also, let's not forget the one minute rule on the tourniquet. Very important. Now, if I'm going to show you something here, I followed the order of draw, but I shouldn't have because if I'm drawing a light blue tube, this tubing here has air and I don't want air to get into this tube right here. This tube has to be filled up all the way. This is a coagul this is for coagulation tests. It's sodium citrate. They test PT, PTT coagulation test. And if it's not filled up all the way, they will reject it. So really I should put the red top tube in first, fill it up, get the air out of the tube, pop it out. This is non-additive, 
grab my light blue tube now because I don't have air in it, pop it in, pull it out and go from here and then continue with my green. If I have to hold on to my butterfly, that's fine. What I would do is keep the tube in there. Once I'm in the vein like you just saw, hold it, pop it, get my one hand maneuver, invert, put my tube down, get my second tube, pop, let it fill, come out, invert, and so on. If I have to hold it, then that's fine. If I have to put it in this hand, I can grab my tube, pop it in, go, pop it out, and so forth. So if I have to hold it right here, that's fine. This allows me still control, and I'm filling from the bottom up. You have to kind of play with what you feel you can use and decide for yourself. Once I'm done, pop my tourniquet off. Take my two by two, come to the side right here. Come out in a way, just like I did with my straight needle. Now this needle has a different type of device. There is little triggers here on the side that actually I have to pinch and then slide up. So once I put pressure here on the finger, I come out in a way, I grab this too and I slide my needle up and lock it over the device. As you can see, it locks in. So it doesn't move. Once I pinch this, it goes. If I'm good enough with one hand, then I can actually try, which is these I don't really care for. These are a lot harder to operate with one hand and I can push it through. The older butterflies were just slide right up. Here I have to go here and push through. So it all depends. You have to kind of get a feel for how these are and determine how you want to go ahead and use these butterflies. And again, there's different types. So you gotta be careful on which ones you're using. Not all butterflies are the same. But again, uh, everything as far as the steps is the same. Out and away on the side, cover three to five minutes on the side, no lifting for one hour. Keep the bandage on uh, for 15 minutes. Check it three to five, no bleeding. Keep it on there. If there's bleeding, another three to five minutes. If the patient continues to bleed after the second three to five minutes, then there's something wrong. Then you want to call the nurse or call the doctor if he's there or the nurse and let them know the patient is not ble is continuing bleeding and is not stopping. Because coagulation test, if you looked at my bleeding time video, it's up to nine minutes. So if we did twice, three to five, three to five, that's 10 minutes. He should have stopped the bleeding. If not, then something's wrong. We need to let the nurse know we can't the patient leave the lab. If he's at a lab, he has to stay there. We're gonna have to call a paramedic or let him sit there and keep more pressure. And we might have to call his physician, let him know that the patient is still bleeding. He might be on medication, a blood thinner, aspirin. We would know that if we asked the three Ps. So remember my three Ps video for getting the three Ps? We need to be aware of that. So again, if he stops bleeding, wrap it up. Keep it on for 15 minutes, no lifting for one hour because it could cause the bruising. So everything else is the same as far as uh, a hand draw. So there should be no difference there. So I hope this helps the butterfly draw is really easy and simple. Uh, the devices are great to handle and they're a lot easier to use. Uh, the order of draw can change if you're using a light blue and a red top. And you, you're gonna use the red top first to get the air out. But three to four inches, everything else is the same. So I hope this helped with your butterfly draws. If you have any questions, definitely leave them here in my comments or email me if you have any thoughts or concerns or you think I missed something here. But that's the butterfly draw.